those Stinson owners and want-to-be owners and Stinson fanatics. This is Brett in Neodeshay, Kansas. I'm creating a very short, simple video on something I learned in Oshkosh, and I want to pass it on. I have had problems forever with fuel staining on top of my wings. And... Uh, I have washed it off before I went to Oshkosh, and I wish I would have taken a picture of it, but the staining all back here was absolutely terrible. Um, and it uh, is especially bad since I've been burning a mo gas or auto fuel. Well, the, suspicious, the suspicion was that the problem was created by this gasket under the fuel neck that was a poor seal and it appeared to me that that was possible because this gasket was usually damp with gasoline however the the leakage was more than what this gasket should generate it appeared to me so I want to thank Billy Carter uh, at Oshkosh for helping me with this. He does make a kit that seals off the neck to the tank um, much better than the original manufacturer. And I was going to buy one of those from him. However, he said, Brett, did you check your gas cap? He said, you know, Univer for years has sent out gas caps that were the wrong cap. I said, I don't know, what do you mean? He said, take it off and look at it. He said, if your gas cap has a vent hole, not the, not the pressurized hole that's put on there for aviation use, but if it has a vent hole, that's the problem. It's, not, it's probably not this seal here. So, Shazam, look at this. See that little hole right there? That is a vent hole. So the problem I was actually having was the fuel was expanding and then also under flight, the low pressure area that's created over the wing would actually suck the fuel out until it got down to a certain point through this vent hole. And through that vent hole, it would come out over the, the, uh, the seal here. So... Billy told me, let me give you a close shot of that vent hole. He said you could plug it up or he said Univer makes a new cap. And so I was at Oshkosh and I went down to Univer's uh, stand and sure enough, they have the cap. So I'm going to show this cap to you. And like I say, I don't want to do a lot of editing to this video. I just frankly don't have time. But there's the part number to the cap and let me take the cap out and show it to you it's a nice looking cap it's quite expensive I think they're $125 a piece but you know what I was tired of dealing with the stains it was embarrassing on the top of my wings this is a nice looking cap from Univer machined aluminum it has the pressurized hole on it, and looky there, no vent hole. So I am looking forward to trying this out, and I suspect this will solve probably 90% of my problem, if not all of it, uh, but if it doesn't, then I will have to also install the, uh, the new gasket seal kit uh, from Billy Carter. So again, wanted to pass this on, this is a great uh, news for me uh, as I was uh, trying to deal with this uh, ugly staining on the, the Stinsons. Now this is the only applicable, whoop, sorry about that. This is only applicable on the Stinson 108-1 and 2. The 3 has another, a different cap and another pressurized uh, tube on top of the wing that's not with the cap. I'm not sure about uh, the earlier Stinsons prior to the one. So you'll have to do some homework on that. So I hope this helps some of you out there. So long from Neodeshay, Kansas. Well, I guess uh, this video is not gonna be as simple as I originally thought. 
The manufacturer of this cap is, um, let's say they're uh, close, but not quite perfect. They did not index these tabs correctly, per, at least per my airplane. Maybe there's multiple ways to index this, but here's the problem. My old gas cap, I rotate it, I put it on, and the pressurized tube goes towards the front. All right, that's the way it's supposed to be. So I thought I was just going to be able to put my new caps on. Well, I can, but they, they don't index properly. So put them on, and I thought, uh-oh, this is not going to be good. Uh, Nope, not quite, and so I uh, go this way. Uh, no, not at all. So, unfortunately, this cap is, the new cap is not indexed the same as my airplane. And again, I don't know if my airplane has been changed or not. So, I will have to remove this fuel neck and Rotate it. It looks like one rotation. Uh, and fortunately, I did buy some gaskets. Now, I only have one gasket for each side. However, it looks like somebody really yucked this up. So, I don't know. Anyway, here's the number of the gaskets. So, if you're going to get these fuel caps, make sure you get some of these gaskets because... It's not as simple as putting it on, unfortunately. So, um, again, I will uh, resume this video after I go through the installation. Well, like most projects that uh, I run into, and especially in aviation, it gets uh, more in depth. So, make sure that you have a magnet, a really strong magnet when you do this project, because I guarantee you at least one of these uh, sheet metal uh, nuts uh, Tinnerman's nuts is going to fall down in the tank and you can easily pick them out with that magnet um, Then another observation that I made is Regardless of how good this seal is there's an opportunity for the uh, Fuel to seep out of the screws now. That's one of the things that I liked about Billy Carter's backing plate system is he has a plate that goes in underneath the, the top of the fuel tank and the backing nuts are riveted and sealed. Really nice, nice design that Billy has. Unfortunately, I don't have any pictures of it to show it to you. So another thing is after I took this off, I thought, oh, there's what Billy Carter's talking about. This top of this fuel tank is so thin, look how it's non-flat. It's pretty difficult for me to show this to you uh, here. So if I had one of Billy Carter's backing plate kits, I would go ahead and put it on because this is gonna be very difficult to seal. Now I do have my new seal, but I guarantee you there's not enough thickness of this gasket to accommodate for this. Now. This may not be the right material to use, but it's Sunday, and I don't, it's all, and the nearest uh, uh, aircraft approved uh, uh, Napa store is uh, 20 miles away from me. So I've got some of this, I'm gonna use it. It may not be the right thing, but if it doesn't work, I'm gonna get one of Billy Carter's kits. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show you that, uh, I am going to clean this off and clean this off and use a gasket as well as sealer and especially sealing underneath the screw heads when I put this back together. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you. So obviously uh, previous owners of this airplane had uh, tried to deal with this issue and they had two gaskets here trying to seal this down on each side so this has been an issue so again we got two issues here we got a bad fuel cap from the get-go with a vent that's uh, sucking fuel out 
And then this uh, attempted seal here. But um, if this doesn't work, well, we'll do another video on Billy Carter's solution. And so uh, we'll go back together with this and see how she works. Okay, I got the starboard side uh, mounted and I came over to do the port side and I have not removed the, uh, the neck yet, but look at here. Uh, I didn't notice that the caps were indexed differently or not, but this one index is fine. However, I, I learned so much on how to uh, get a better seal on the neck, I'm going to replace this neck as well. Uh, now, if you are an old fart like I am, and you have a condition in your hands called Dupuytrens that causes this, where you cannot straighten your finger out, get somebody that has flexible fingers. It was a real challenge for me. Also, I'm going to use a slightly different approach, uh, material. Uh, I'm going to use this material to seal underneath the um, screw heads as well as the gasket material. I think it's going to work better than uh, this material uh, by Loctite. But uh, I guess this will be a good test. I've got uh, one side, the um, the starboard side, that is uh, primarily uh, the the seal is done by uh, the Loctite material, and on the port side uh, we will use uh, primarily the Permatex. So uh, this may be a good test too. So uh, anyway, I do not have to re rotate uh, this fuel nozzle. I put a tick mark here to indicate the front, and so I'm just going to remove it and reseal it. So here we go. What I forgot to mention is underneath the head of the screw, before I put that down, I am using on both sides this uh, gasket material underneath the head of the screw. I think that is an often overlooked uh, area. So here we go. This is the, the day after, not the morning after, but the day after. Uh, I put the new fuel caps on and then also resealed the necks. And I believe we've got the problem solved. Uh, probably a few more flights to know for sure, but uh, I filled it up uh, just below the neck and typically when I have a problem, the fuel when it expands, when it's hot, uh, will tend to seep out and I saw nothing. So we may be onto something here. We're gonna do a, a couple hour flight and uh, see how she goes and I'll uh, report back. Okay, I am continuing to test with the new fuel caps. This will be the fourth test. So far, so good. We have absolutely no fuel leakage and no staining. These caps are awesome. If you're not using these caps, you need to get them. The old caps that have an extra vent hole in them are lousy. Do not use them. These are great. So we got one more trip and we'll be testing it uh, on the way to Beaumont, Kansas today with some guests.